of a star started in sight Trying to find a white spot To rest my soul for the night The moon was full and glowing Illuminating the desert floor Dreams Talk Radio Network brings you the World Paranormal News with James Creechbaum. Now, the latest news. This is Night Dreams Talk Radio Network News, and I'm James Creechbaum. Well, for all the truckers out there on the road, here's a little bit of weather for you. Accumulating snow is possible across the southern mid-Atlantic for Thursday and Friday particularly in uh, North Carolina. And you could see at least up to one inch of snow as of beginning Thursday morning. Severe so wind chill alerts from tonight into tomorrow uh, mid-morning. And that's from the northern plain states uh, up into Montana, Wisconsin, uh, Iowa, Michigan, clear across there. Very cold. We're talking 10 to 20 below wind chill. A flash flood watch is now extends into Georgia and in, into uh, middle Georgia, Mississippi, and Alabama. Flash flooding warnings. Beware of those. Current weather is a little bit of snow uh, into Montana and Idaho and then around Colorado, Wyoming areas. In the Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, and uh, West Virginia, it's mixed of rain, freezing rain. In the southern states, it's rain and a lot of thunderstorms, which is contributing to the flash flooding warnings. Truckers out there for this weekend, Missouri Department of Transportation warns drivers to be ready for major weekend I-70 shutdown. The Missouri Department of Transportation is expecting major traffic delays when they close portions of I-70 in Kansas City for construction this weekend. According to the Missouri Department of Transportation, both directions of I-70 will be shut down in Kansas City as of 10 p.m. on Friday, February 21st, until 5 a.m. on Monday, February 24th. Missouri Department of Transportation says that I-70 West will be closed between Route 291 and I-470 and I-435, while eastbound I-70 will be closed at I-435. I also, Missouri Department of Transportation recommends I-470 as an alternate route for both eastbound and westbound I-70 drivers. Also, if you're in the Michigan area, the Department of Transportation, it says the mechanic bridge closed to all vehicles except passenger cars and vans and empty pickups. Wind gusts of 50 mile an hour plus, reduce speed to 20 mile per hour approaching the bridge and prepare to stop personal station personnel stationed at both ends of the bridge to provide instructions on how and when to proceed. Mothman reports around Lake Michigan increased since 2017. Sightings of a large-winged humanoid in the Chicago area have been recorded with growing frequency since 2017, and records of similar sightings date back as far as 1969. Sightings of a weird wing beams around Lake Michigan have been reported at all hours, often in or near the park and around the water. Witnesses consistently describe a large gray, black bat, or bird-like creature. Although in a small number of cases the creature was described as insect-like, sometimes with glowing or reflective red, yellow, or orange eyes, and humanoid features such as arms and legs are often reported. Here's a little timeline of Lake Michigan Mothman sightings so far. 
On December 6th, sightings was the, the uh, latest report from the Park Ridge area near O'Hara. Previously, reports in the same area came on November 26th, October 30th, October 29th, October 19th, and October 5th. Witnesses generally describe a seven-foot-tall bean with red eyes. Human compost and funerals better for environment. A U.S. firm has given scientific details of its human composting process for environmentally friendly funerals. A, a pilot study on deceased volunteers showed that soft tissue broke down safely and completely within 30 days. Now, the firm claims that its process saves more than a ton of carbon compared to cremation and traditional burial. It says that it will offer the world's first human composting services in Washington State from next February. Next news break, top of the hour. Good evening or morning, depending on your time zone. From the Pacific to the Atlantic to you worldwide, get yourself a cup of java and find a comfy, easy chair. And get ready for Gary <clears throat> and his guest on Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark. And now, here's Gary. From the compound in Gig Harbor, Washington. From the Pacific to the Atlantic to you worldwide. Good evening or morning, depending on your time zone. This is Gary. Are you ready for a ride in the paranormal? We got a full tank of gas and we're ready to go. Our guest tonight, Patrick Cross. Can you say UFOs? Ghost hunting. Spirits. A weekend tonight. Get an easy chair. Get that fire going. Get something hot to drink. Because tonight we're going on a real ride in the paranormal. You're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark with our host, Gary Anderson. And that is me. Well, what can I say to all the listeners in my hometown of Gig Harbor, Washington? I want to be a do a big shout out. I just want to thank you for tuning in. I've been getting a lot of text messages and emails from you guys. And I hope everybody's had a great day. I tell you what, Earth Changes, James, is going on. Regardless what some people, political people say, uh, it's getting scary. You know that. Yes, I do know that. It's. I can tell you right now, it's 50 plus degrees here today. And it should be, you know, around 20. And it's all over. It was 60 plus degrees in Antarctica just last week, Gary. Yeah, it was actually almost 70. That is that is bikini weather for some people. I, I tell you, up in Washington, though, when the weather gets in the mid-60s, people are wearing shorts, they got their sunglasses on, they got their cups of Starbucks coffee, and they're just walking around going into the shops. They're, they're just ready for summer here. Oh, yeah. I I remember a long time ago, I, I moved down to Florida in February, and it was, you know, I've been in North a long time, and it was 70 degrees in South Florida, and people was freezing. I was out on the beach in just shorts and having a good old time in the water. <laughs> he was looking at me like I was insane. Well, are you? Well, that's side the point. <laughs> it was still good night nice swimming weather for me. Well, a guy in South Carolina, <laughs> guess what? Uh-oh. One two hundred and fifty thousand jackpot with a five dollar ticket. I, I, you know, I must be psychic because I knew that's what happened. Now, he if he was smart, he would go back and play again because the odds of him winning again is pretty good. 
I probably about a week later, according to statistics, but you know what? He actually was vacuuming his car. He found at least five dollars and quarters, and that's what he used to buy the lottery ticket. Two hundred and fifty thousand smackers. Now, who you know, I don't know how much he's going to have left after the taxes, but I'll tell you what, it's certainly a lot more than five bucks. Yeah, I I love those stories where you scrounge up just enough to get a ticket or a few tickets and, and you end up winning. That That's great. Oh, yeah. You know, the wacky news is not really wacky tonight because there isn't much wacky news between yesterday and today. Well, a, a pony was rescued from a flooded field in England. Now, that, I tell you, that is nothing really wacky, is it? <laughs> no, that actually sounds like kind of a heartwarming story that the animal got saved kind of like the one that fell through the ice there a couple days ago but yeah that's not wacky wacky would be you know a donkey was drunk and fell on the ice and got had to get rescued and got sent to jail or to the vet or something but yeah (laughs) i got you well a guy with a rocket uh rocket powered wing set took off for a high altitude he went thousands and thousands of feet up. In fact, he reached nearly 6,000 feet above the ground with his rocket pack. Wow. What was he thinking? I'll tell you what, that's a good way to die. Remember the guy had all them helium balloons and, and hooked it to a chair and went way up high? It doesn't take much. You don't have to fall very far to break your neck, but 6,000 feet. I got to tell you, I think I would have test drove that quite a while around 10 foot first. Oh, yeah. Well, 6,000 feet, you don't have to worry about it when you hit the ground. It, no. You know, most people would probably die before they hit the ground of fright. But, you know, a couple of years ago, there was a guy who went from France to England with a jet suit, you know, uh, with wings and all that stuff, and he made it all the way across. Oh, wow. I, it's funny, I never heard about that story. That's amazing. That's Still, you're taking a risk. It, it's just dangerous stuff. I, I wouldn't want to do it. Well, if you want to break the world record, I guess people are willing to try anything. But, you know, I was watching after I read this in the news today, I just kind of researched it. And then I I remember vaguely and then I read more about the guy who made two attempts. The first time he was going between France and, you know, England, he didn't quite make it. The second time he actually made it. It was really interesting. And, you know, he was going at, at, well, a clip of like 400 miles an hour. Holy and, and, and it, it just as in a, a you know uh, with a set of wings and a, a jet powered could you imagine what that would feel like Ooh, i wouldn't want to try it but i was looking at some videos of other people who you know failed attempts and they were quite funny and comical like there was one guy who had a rocket power you know maybe back about 50 years ago well he didn't go up in the sky but i can tell you one thing he sure saw the ground at a high speed for a long distance oh, it's a wonder the guy's alive and like you said die of a heart attack from that kind of stuff but god bless him yeah i don't know but anyway <laughs> they they were taking this building down in dallas and it was 11 story building but something went wrong And now Dallas has their own leaning tower of Dallas. Um, That would be a sight for sore eyes. Leaning tower of Dallas. Those are dangerous, dangerous buildings. I wouldn't want to be on. Can you imagine being on the top floor of that and looking? You'd be at an angle looking out. That would feel weird. Well, you wouldn't be going into this building because they were going to tear it down. It's totally yes, been gutted way, yeah. out. So, I mean, you know, you go in and, and it probably could collapse, you know, right on on you. But, you know, sometimes when they take these buildings down, it doesn't go the way it did. In Seattle, years ago, we had the Coliseum. Big thing, you know, dome and all that, where we had sports and the Beatles played in and all that stuff. I tell you, when they took it down, it was interesting the, it, the way it went down. But I've seen some of these things where they take buildings down and it doesn't go quite the way it's supposed to go. No, it doesn't. And I, you're right. I've seen some of those, too, on the demolition. I, they're supposed to come straight down so they don't hit other buildings. I've seen a couple go array, so to speak, and cause a lot of damage. And, and I've seen one wipe out a little building beside it, and I don't think the people next door were too happy. 
Well, considering, you know, that could be their, you know, livelihood or the where they live. I don't know. Guess what? I- 